Peggy 12. European Solace 4 is a grand strategy game set in the age of exploration and colonization. For me, this has always been one of the concepts that really sets this game apart, that sort of lets you choose what kind of game you play. Suppose you're a small naval power at the edge of Europe. You can't really get into this, fight huge land battles with France and these kind of things. You can make a choice, you can go for colonization. And if you really want to make the big bucks here, you should get in early. And you do this by selecting the exploration idea group. You have these forks in the road all the time, the interesting gameplay choices where you have to choose what country am I going to be. And if you become the exploration nation and, and you have the idea that's called quest for the new world, you can recruit explorers and you can put them in command of your fleets. And then you send them off into the great unknown to find new lands. And of course, as a modern human being, I have a vague idea where North America is. So I probably know where I'm going to sail, but still, I always get the feeling that, that it's still exciting, right? Which part of America will I find first? Will I go to America? Will I find around Africa? And who will be there when I get there, right? And once your explorers find new land, unless he dies on the way, which you will notice that quite a few will, <laughs> uh, you can build colonies. Uh, and we've changed a bit of how colonization works. Before, it was all about send colony, wait time, look for a dice roll, and then it happens. Now it's much more a gradual approach. You send off one of your envoys, one of your colonists, to go there and work on your colony. And as he works, the colony will slowly build up. And as you build up your colonial empire, you will notice that you get some interesting colonial events. Your, your colonies can spread. We talked in the previous dev diary about religion, for example. If you oppress the religious minorities, they can migrate overseas to your colonies, which will give you provinces of the wrong religion, of course, but it will also increase your overseas empire. And, and if your colony grows efficiently and you become rich enough, then you can have some guy calling himself a founding father who will pop up and decide that he wants to become a new country and sing songs about Star Spangled Banners and other strange things, so you need to fight these people. Um, colonization is all about positioning as well. We have the new trade system with the trade routes that you probably heard about. When you go off colonizing, the direction to take is often the direction of the trade route. And if you can find a part of the world that feeds into your trade very well and you can get there first, you can really become so much more rich than any other country in the world. And of course, some countries are better suited than others for this game. If you say if you're Austria, in the center of Europe, you can do colonization, but you need to conquer the coastline first. But on the other hand, if you're Portugal and you can become friends with, with Castile, your strong neighbor to the west, and you can sort of secure that flank, you can almost ignore the rest of Europe for a while. And you can um, build your overseas empire and farm the route to India and get the riches that way. Or for example, if you're England, you lose the Hundred Years' War uh, and the rest of Europe will look on you as a poor peripheral state and say that, ah, England is out of the game, right? But as they squabble about the spoils of victory, you send your explorers over the seas to America and you, you found new colonies. And then the next time the French player looks across the channel, he doesn't see a poor backward country on the edge of Europe. He sees a global world spanning empire that he has no chance to compete with. And the great thing about, about exploration and colonization is really that as you send out your explorers, you can really change what your country is. If you run into a wall in other areas of expansion, you can go into the new world and find new provinces and new places to conquer. And really, you start off as a small country and then after a hundred years, you're a huge world-spanning empire.